Then let's talk about what are your plans for New Year's Eve? Ah, I wrote some notes early this morning. So we have Diana on the concert. We have French music. We have, uh, we have German music. We have Austrian music. We've got Czech music. We've got English music. We've got American music. We've got patriotic music. We've got Canadian music. We have Broadway music and we have film music. So it's like going around the world <laughs> for a, New Year's Eve. It should be a big party, except I want to try and make everybody sort of tear up once or just get sentimental. Room. Yeah, just be quiet, you know, long before I knew you, you know, when Richard sings that, you know, that Judy Holiday song from, you know, the 1960s. It just, it's a killer. You know, it speaks to every man, every woman, every person who's been in love that long before I knew you, I loved you and I knew it was you. You know, from, you know, just a beautiful Broadway tune or the Edith Piaf song, you know, the hymn to love. Oh. Yeah, that Josh Groban made so famous. And when Richard walks out and you, first of all, if you just look at him, you'll be in love because he's a gorgeous, lovely, entertaining, use the word captivating. He's a captivating guy, but he has a voice like butter, just like butter. He is like, and he just graduated not many years ago, eight, nine years ago from the Lyric Ryan Young Artist Program, mm -hmm. which selects just those dozen sure. great people from all over the world. He's fantastic. So that's some of it. What else would you like to know? Well, what anything? I think what's fun about New Year's Eve um, with, with us here is uh, it's a very festive concert. It's a pops concert. It's very accessible. You won't feel like, I don't know this music. Oh, it's no. very fun and yeah. and it's easy to listen to and it's um, powerful. Mm. And what I love about our New Year's Eve is it's such a sophisticated but fun evening. And then there's champagne in the lobby and everybody visits for a little bit. And it's a nice early evening if you don't wanna be out running around in traffic, you know, on New Year's Eve late. Um, yeah. The shows are, are scheduled so that you can be home and celebrate your actual midnight at midnight. Yeah. Um, or go to dinner before or after. Um, so I think there's lots of flexibility in spending your New Year's Eve here. And I think it, it because you make it such an eclectic show, I'm always amazed, like, oh, I know that song. I know that song. Whenever I think <laughs> symphony, I'm like, I don't know those songs. And then I see your show, and I'm like, oh, I know this song. I right. know this song. And yeah. it's fun to hear it with this huge symphony playing professionally, and it's, like, coming at you, you know? Uh -huh. And there is there's such a an energy you get from that music to propel you into the new year with in, in such a wonderful, sophisticated, but fun way. You yeah, know? it should be a party. It is. Doubt. And yeah. the way you've scheduled them now, Diana, there's a 1.30, there's a 5, and there's an 8.30. Mm -hmm. So just as you say, you could come, go to, you know, come to the show, go to dinner. Go to dinner with your friends, uh, you know, do it the other way. You know, just make your day, you know, right. depending on how you feel. Like maybe you want to come to the afternoon show. Mm -hmm. and then hit dinner. Or right. Hit your relatives up for dinner or whatever. No, it's a, it's a really enjoyable night. Um, by the time the concert's done, there is a real buzz in the mm -hmm. room. And you can feel that, uh, you know, one of the goals we all have here is to make a family of people. Right. And you can feel that there's a family mm -hmm. there together, feeling this moment in time that we all mark and remember and celebrate and have all those emotions. Together. It's fun to celebrate with 800 people. Right? Yes. It's super fun. <laughs> it is. And you you create that community, Kirk. You always tell people, come talk to us, oh, come yeah. visit with us, and we're in the lobby afterwards. And I think visiting with the audience before and after the show, you're usually getting ready before the show. So I'm out there before the show. And mm -hmm. and people are just so happy to be there and be together. And I love, I love our new Phil family that we have. They're a very special, tight group who... who you know, and it keeps growing, and there's new people mm -hmm. and younger people, and and I just love, I love their their commitment to the orchestra and you. You know, they're very they're very excited about what's coming, and they're very um, supportive, and it is a unique audience. It is. 
actually, it's amazing to me how many people have become friends. Yeah. Because of, and I don't know, maybe it's because of Mac things. Maybe they're going to theater. Maybe they're going to art things. But I know them just at the symphony, mm -hmm. and they become friends. So, yeah. for example, there's two of our patrons, and they're dealing with cancer right now. Mm -hmm. And they have friends that they never knew before, but they got to really know them at New Philharmonic, right. and there's emails going to them saying, hey, how did your chemo treatment go the other day? Uh -huh. And that's because of this. Mm -hmm. And you don't find that in very many places with an orchestra, or a hall, or an environment, you know, like this. It's, it's pretty special. It is, it's great.